It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. The Mercamorain is a finished tier 2 premium fighter which is just proof that the Finnish will do anything to scare the living shit out of every Soviet man who dares try to invade the lands of the great mother country. This Frankenstein of a plane is basically the body of a French MS-410 and the front of a Soviet Lag-3 so taped together and reinforced by the spirit and hardness of Finnish heavy metal. All of this gives the Moraine the maneuverability of a slick and womanizing Frenchman but also the speed and power of your average drugged up Soviet athlete. All of this at a battle rating of 1.7. I'm sorry, what the fuck? This combination of maneuverability engine power and a low battle rating mixed together to make this plane a pretty overpowered pay to win seal clubber if used in the right way. So let's start at the part of this plane which gives it its large amounts of raw power and that happens to be the Klimov M105P which is basically a stellinium knockoff of the Hispano Sousa 12Y. This engine is able to crank out a healthy 1020 horsepower in normal operation and around 1143 horsepower on takeoff which is substantially more than many of the biplanes which you will be most likely facing. This all adds up with this plane being able to just hit its fast slated top speed of 326 miles per hour at 5000 meters. However we should remind ourselves that this is an early Soviet engine we are talking about, so the engine will suffer from oxygen deprivation at higher altitudes due to a lack of forced air induction, plus the web which is actually a rare sight on this kind of engine will stop working at around 3465 meters which just contributes even more to the drop of power at high altitude. Also another note on the war emergency power is that it will absolutely drink fuel like the WEP on the British Merlin engines. So the pilot should keep an eye on their fuel gauge if they pin the WEP for the majority of the time, just to avoid the embarrassment of running out of fuel and looking like a fucking pleb before they get their ass blown out of the sky. Speaking of blowing things up, Let's now take a look at the armament, which consists of two wing-mounted MAC-1934 7.5mm machine guns, along with an resin UB 12.7mm heavy machine gun firing through the propeller shaft. When it comes to ammunition it is recommended that you pick universal belts for the MACs and ground belts for the Berezin, and then tell the other belts to go eat shit. Now you may question why I said you should pick the ground focused belts for the Berezin. Well there is one round in this belt which makes it superior to all the others and that is the armor piercing incendiary bullet with Sermat core. This single stellinium composite infused round has the power to basically punch through any armor or engine block which you may come across and thus makes this plane rather deadly in a head on as the APIC round can go straight through the damn plane and give the pilot handling it a severe emotional event or if it fails to do that the round may have most likely managed to fuck up the engine anyways and the enemy would almost certainly end up losing power and crashing I have already given hints here and there about this plane's flight performance but I think it's time we got into the nitty gritty details because this plane has the body and wings from a slick French design. This plane has quite a large amount of maneuverability. Of course its turn radius isn't as good as a biplane, but it can still give similar monoplanes a run for their money. Surprisingly this plane can also pull quite a large amount of speed in a dive, redlining at around 446 miles per hour. However it should be noted that the controls, especially the ailerons and the rudder will begin to compress rather heavily at high speeds, which can make it frustrating to hit targets or dodge incoming fire. Also its roll rate in general flight is rather average, but at higher speeds it majorly suffers. Getting that speed however is usually not too much of an issue in the first place, as the powerful Klimov engine gives this plane a high amount of acceleration and climb rate, allowing you to outrun and outclimb any tailing biplane who thinks they can hold a horsepower scented candle to you. Why are you running? Why are you- yeah. Finally getting into the tactics, in honesty, it really comes down to what type of enemy you are fighting. If you are fighting a fat bomber or a slower turning monoplane, then using your maneuverability to outmaneuver them and get on their six is the way to go. 
However if you are up against a biplane, then you should use your superior engine power to outclimb and out energy fight your opponent before you get above and behind them to give them a healthy dose of finish hockey pucks. But probably the best tactic to use with this plane is the classical head on attack, as the plane's propeller mounted heavy machine gun with the aforementioned Sermat core bullets will punch through the enemy like they were made of paper mash, and you will find the most success out of this form of attack, even against stronger opponents when the matchmaker ultimately fucks you and up tears you like the incompetent fat fuck it is. In these sorts of situations, you will have to play more passively, as most of the enemy aircraft you will face can outpower and sometimes outmaneuver you, and the best thing to do is to bait enemies into heading you on and filling their stupid faces with regret in the form of your stellinium infused salvos. Since this plane is a premium aircraft, you will need to part with 700 of your golden pigeons to acquire it, but considering what this plane can do alongside its premium bonuses, it will be worth every single penny. Plus since it's a premium it comes with all its modifications out of the box, meaning you can just jump in with maximum performance from the start and get on with seal clubbing those low tier noobs. When it comes to pilot skills it's rather straightforward, primarily focus on G tolerance and stamina to make the most out of this plane's maneuverability, while not forgetting about vitality, to make pilot snipes out of fucking nowhere less likely. And that is it, now you know how to fly the monster moraine. Now get out there, and spread the glorious sisu of the great northern country of Finland.